If you're a gardener that lives in a hot summer climate, as spring is winding up, one thing is on your mind. How am I gonna get my garden ready for summer? Summers are so hot, but there are a few things you can do to help your garden survive better during the hottest months of the year. And in today's video, I'm going to share the 10 things that I'm doing right now to get my garden ready for summer. But if we haven't met before, my name's Angela from Growing in the Garden, and I love to share garden inspiration and helpful tips so you can be successful in your own garden. The first thing that I'm gonna do is take a hard look at all of my containers. During the cooler months, just about anything grows in any size container. But as temperatures heat up, those smaller containers make it much more difficult to grow in because they heat up and dry out so much faster. So at the end of spring, I put a lot of those smaller containers away until next fall. As things finish up, I harvest the contents. I dump the contents onto my in-ground beds or add it to my compost pile. I grow a lot of bulbs in containers for that very reason. It's easy to move those bulbs into a shady location, let those plants die back naturally, and then harvest the bulbs. During the summer, it is too hot for those small containers. I will only garden in the larger containers during the hottest months of the year. My next step in getting ready for summer is taking a look at the containers that are left, typically just my whiskey barrels, and making sure that they all have oyas in them. I don't have supplemental irrigation going to most of my containers, and Oya helps those containers not dry out as quickly during the hottest months of the year. Oyas are an underground vessel that you fill with water, and then that water seeps out naturally to provide water to the plant's roots. I want those whiskey barrels to have at least a medium and hopefully a large Oya to help them make it through the summer. The next thing I'm going to do is checking my watering system. I'm going to check each raised bed and all of my landscape plants to make sure that the emitters and grids going into those beds are working properly. During the cooler months, a broken emitter may not be a big deal, but during the intense heat of summer, a broken emitter means the plant could die before you realize it needs water. Check everything now. Run your watering system, run your drip irrigation, check all of those emitters, and do it now before temperatures heat up too much more and it's not bad to be outside. The next step in getting ready for summer is adding mulch to everything. Mulch is a hot summer gardener's best friend. There are so many reasons I love mulch. The hot sun is hard on plants. Mulch keeps the sun off of the soil so it stays cooler. Thick mulch helps insulate that soil even more. Higher soil temperatures mean slower plant growth and mulch moderates that temperature just a bit. A thick layer of mulch means that less moisture is lost through evaporation. You can then water less frequently, which saves water, money, and time. Next step in getting ready for summer is taking a hard look at all the plants that are growing. Hot temperatures are coming up and cool season crops should be finishing up. If a crop hasn't produced or doesn't look like it's going to produce, I may make the choice to pull that plant rather than leave that plant in to get stressed. For example, if I have cold season vegetables like broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower that have not produced, it's getting past the time for those crops to produce and all they're going to do is get stressed with the higher temperatures and attract insects. I do have some cool season herbs that I'm going to continue to leave in the garden. Things like cilantro and parsley that are flowering and attracting beneficials. I'm gonna go ahead and leave those in a little bit longer. So go around your garden and take stock of what's growing and make adjustments and pull plants as needed. My next step is to finish up planting and make plans for future summer plantings. Although there are many things that you can plant when temperatures are high, it's a great idea to get them started earlier so those roots have time to get established before the hottest temperatures come. I'm looking ahead to what can I plant in May, what can I plant in June, and making plans for where I'm going to plant when some of those crops like garlic and onions and potatoes are harvested from the garden. 
As part of that planting process, my next step is to plan for cover crops. If I have a bed that isn't going to be in full production, I wanna make sure that I'm planting a cover crop in that during the hottest months of the year. That keeps that soil active and it'll have the added bonus when I turn that cover crop into the soil of adding organic matter to the soil. Some ideas for summer cover crops in the summer are soybeans, cowpeas, sorghum, Someone even mentioned to me that they're growing tithonia as a chop and drop crop in their garden. What a great idea. If you have beds that aren't going to be used during the summer, cover crops are an excellent idea. Now that I have my plan for where things are gonna be planted this summer, I'm going to assess my yard for shade. Where does my yard get shade naturally? Where do I need to add some shade? How is my garden going to do during the hottest months of the year? Do I need to add shade? Most vegetables are stressed when temperatures are above 100 degrees. Providing shade for plants can lower the amount of moisture lost through transpiration. The shaded area can be about 10 degrees cooler than areas without shade. Look at the areas that receive full sun in your garden. Do you need to add shade to those areas? Now that you know where you need shade, the next step is to add that shade to your garden. And you can add shade to your garden in many different ways. A couple of the ways I like to add shade is with sunflowers and with shade cloth. Sunflowers are one of my favorite ways to add shade to my garden. Here are a couple things to remember when using sunflowers to add shade to your garden. It's best to plant them outside of your garden bed so they don't compete with the plants in the beds. Plant those sunflowers on the west side of your garden so that it can help shade those plants from the afternoon sun. Another way to add shade to your garden is with shade cloth. Here are a few things to remember when adding shade cloth to your garden. Shade cloth comes in different coverages. A percentage of 40 to 60% shade cloth is good for vegetables during the summer. 40% shade cloth for most vegetables, 50% shade cloth for tomatoes, and 60 to 70% shade cloth for succulents and other light sensitive plants. And the last thing I'm going to do to prepare my garden for summer is to prepare to be a little bit disappointed. Summer is stressful and hard on your plants, hard on the gardener, hard on the garden. Things don't always go according to plan. You never know exactly what type of summer we're going to get. We know it's going to be hot and dry, but will we get monsoons? Will we have record-breaking temperatures again this year? We don't know. So part of getting ready for summer gardening is just being prepared for some of that uncertainty. That despite our best plans, that some plants will probably die, things won't always go according to plan. Gardening during the summer in a hot summer climate certainly has its challenges. The best we can do is to enjoy our successes and learn from our mistakes and hope for the best. Thank you so much for watching.